What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to explain how to set up a saltwater tank. I've done it several times so I feel uh, pretty experienced in doing it and I, this is going to be a simple uh, basic guide of how to do it. So if this is your first time setting up a saltwater tank, welcome. If you've done freshwater and you've done fish keeping in the past, this shouldn't be too hard. But this is going to be a basic guide. Obviously, I have a certain tank and a certain stand and equipment that I'm adding. You don't have to do the exact same thing. Um, if you want, it's in the description, all the links to all the equipment and of the setup that I'm going to do here. But if not, this is just a basic guide of how to do it. So we'll start with the tank. As you can see, this is an all-in-one system. So before I jump there, there's three different types. Uh, the first tank you have is just a basic, you know, maybe a 10-gallon tank, and you throw equipment on the back. So like a hang on the back filter, a heater, and like a wave pump. That's as basic as you can get. And you can go anywhere from like 10 gallons to 100 by doing that style. But you're going to have like all this equipment hanging out in the back, and it doesn't look good. The next step up is this. It's called an all-in-one system. All the equipment filtration is in the back, tucked away so you can't see it. So all you see is this back black background the third option is the most popular you have a little box here water goes down through tubing and you have another tank down below which is called a sump and that also all the equipment's tucked away all three methods work um this 30 gallon tank is on a stand that was specifically made for it so i should be uh, all set with that fill it up with water make sure it's not leaking and also make sure it's nice and level because before you start adding everything into it you want to make sure all that is done have a good foundation and that is basically the first step is the tank so step two is adding all the equipment. So, I mean, obviously this is going to be different from tank to tank, but I'm just going to go briefly what you need for a saltwater tank. So some sort, sort of type of filter. So for an all-in-one system, I have this tray. It comes with, you know, uh, the filter floss to kind of get any particles, debris, partially eaten fish food in there, and I could just remove it. I'm going to add carbon so it removes discoloration and smell out of the tank and also some gfo down below gets rid of phosphates so even though this is all in one and i have this like little media basket that's for this tank but if you have a sump i mean you're going to have that tank down below and you can add um all that type of stuff down below because that's where the water is going down until maybe like a filter sock or have like chemi pure running down there um with an all-in-one i mean now i'm dabbling with protein skimmers that's this Nuvo skim that I got. The protein skimmer basically um, attracts all the particles and all the nasty stuff into this bubbling machine and go into the collection cup. And that's where all the nasty stuff goes. And then you remove it by actually taking it off and cleaning it. This is a, a different style than if you were to have it in a sump. A sump, you would have like a cone skimmer, and those work a lot better. But for this, it's a smaller footprint, so at least I got something going. With a smaller tank, I mean, water change is good enough, so you don't have to worry about that. Heating. Now, heating is very important. You want to make sure it's between 72 to 78 because this is a marine tank. So, I mean, you want kind of a warmish water and then some uh, water circulation pumps of some sorts. This comes with a return pump coming out of these nozzles, but also adding a pump to kind of create a lot of water movement because you're going to have animals that are going to need that swaying current because, I mean, you're talking about an ocean. Ocean has waves and stuff causing the water to go crazy. Lights are so important. I mean, if you're just setting up for salt water, it doesn't matter. Get any kind of light throw it on top, you should be all set. But if you want a reef, it's very important. If you want just a basic fowler, just, you know, if you want fish and rocks, you don't need a crazy light. Uh, just make sure it's not on too long because you can start growing unwanted algae and stuff like that. So guys, lights, heating, filtration, any kind of tank you're setting up, those are the musts. Now, step number three is adding the sand. As you can see on the right side, I have sand, on the left side, I don't. So this is optional. I like to add the sand because it looks more natural. You'll see it on the bottoms of reefs and oceans and stuff like that. So that's why I tend to do that. A lot of fish and invertebrates like to dig in it and just, it, it looks better. But some people like the bare bottom. I mean, there's pros and cons to both. I mean, the pros are it's easy to clean because you'll see all the buildup on the bottom of the tank. You just go in every week, do a water change, siphon it out. It's good. But the trade-off is the con, which is 
the entire tank is just empty. And then you just have the rocks and the corals, everything's beautiful, but you just have this bare bottom. Not a fan. Add the sand, this is to any tank, um, you know, all-in-one, sumps, anything, just add sand. It's gonna be a nice foundation for your rock to sit on and you'll have a lot of life coming out of it. So I like the natural look, it looks better, so I'm gonna go with the sand. Step four is adding the rock. I haven't just added it just yet because I wanted to show you uh, me evenly distributing the sand. Got a nice half inch layer and this is a good talking point because some people prefer to put the rock first and then the sand around to kind of permanently put it in that spot so it doesn't shift too much. I do the opposite. I put the sand in first so then I can throw the rock and kind of push it and form it in a different, because when it comes to aquascaping, I can put it on certain angles um, and have the sand bed kind of put it in position because if you remove the sand I can't put it in the same position because it's not a flat bottom uh, for the rock so it's not going to sit even it's going to be you know moving around but with the sand it kind of puts it in a spot where hey if I want it on an angle it's going to sit on an angle so you have some more wiggle room um, either way uh, if you want to add the sand first and then the rock you can do that or you know put the rock in the sand there's no right or wrong way just different preferences so i'm gonna do that right now add the rock make a cool little aquascape so you'll see that in the next step but let's talk about a little bit about the rock this is where you know if you're gonna put corals in your corals are gonna sit on top of here and it's a good little foundation rock work uh for your corals to basically sit instead of in the sand it's gonna be on top of the rock and the rock's gonna also help with uh filtering out the water and if um, you just want a fowler tank, the rock is just going to be uh, decorations in a sense. So you have fish swimming around the rock work, and that doesn't look too bad either. So I'm going to add the, that into the tank right now. So this is step five, adding the water. Um, but before I talk about that, this is the aquascape I went with, with step four. Um, I showed you it all laid out, and here's the actual aquascape. It'll look better as soon as I fill it up, but I wanted to stop here because I needed to talk about the water. This is very crucial. You want RODI water because you want to start on a good note. Yes, you can start with tap water because if you had, you know, fish keeping experience before with fresh water, I mean, that's what you would use, tap water, and you'd put like dechlorinators and stuff. You could do that. But the only issue is you're going to have problems down the road, and it's going to be a lot harder to maintain, you know, the whole having – it's, you're going to have a lot of algae, a lot of outbreaks, and you're going to get frustrated so much that you're going to want to be done with this. But please don't do that. Start off right. If you don't have enough money to buy all this equipment and stuff, just save up. It's worth waiting because you need the proper equipment to start. Um, I'm adding RODI water right now. Uh, it's pure water. I'm going to add salt to it, and that's what's going to make it a saltwater tank. And I know that this water right here I'm adding has zero TDS. There is nothing in there that's going to cause any issues. So if anything does come later down in the road, I know it's not anything that I added water-wise. It could be something else. So it's already something you could rule out. But if you have to do tap water, yes, you can. Uh, dechlorinate it, add it with salt, and just do, I guess, a lot of water changes. And I don't want you to go down that road. Add our DI water. I'll show you the unit. I have it right here in the laundry room, um, right next to my room, which is cool. And basically, you you get one of these units. It goes through all these different stages from having that dirty water and going through this red line, shoots out the black, nasty stuff down the drain. But it goes through all these different media types to give you that pristine water. I mean, I have some sand, but don't look at that. But it's pure, clean water, and you know there's nothing wrong with it. And just add salt to it, and then add it to the tank, and I mean, you're gonna start off right. So please do that. So once you have the fresh RODI water made up for your tank, it's nothing special until you add the salt. I mean, this is the most crucial thing. This is what your animals need uh, to survive in the tank. Um, go with uh, Instant Ocean. Uh, that is the basic, most well-known salt. You can't go wrong with it. I'm using this higher end one because it has extra elements because I know I'm gonna um, make a reef tank later on, but um, this is just a different brand. Go with Instant Ocean and you'll have great success. So at this point, I finished topping it off with fresh salt water that you saw me make in the previous step. All I did was look on the back of the salt bucket. It tells you how much salt to add in the water. Mix it until it dissolves and then check the salinity. You want it anywhere from 1.023 to 1.025. As soon as that 
you know, as soon as you're within that range, add it to your tank, fill it up, and then the heater, uh, you know, turn on the heater and it should kick in. You want the temperature anywhere from 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as that happens, those two parameters, if you meet those two, you literally can add anything into the tank. Corals, fish, invertebrates, and it will survive. But you don't want to do that just yet because you have to go through a process called cycling. So what is cycling? You're just basically adding good bacteria in the tank to come, you know, compete against, you know, like the bad toxins and pollutants that your fish produce, you know, like fish waste or fish food they throw on there because that breaks down into the water column and you want the good bacteria to fight it. And as long as, you know, it's lightly stocked with, you know, not having too much fish in, in the tank, the good bacteria will win every time. I mean, that's, that's including, you know, having good filtration and water changes every week, you know, 10%. So that's basically what cycling is. The longer, the better. Everything's about patience in the reef or saltwater hobby. So after you do that, you can just add fish and basically you're done. You have a fowler tank. So fish only with live rock. If that's all you want to do is just have beautiful fish and just have rock and sand in the, in the aquarium. I mean, that's the easiest thing to take care of is just fish. So if you have that, congratulations. Thanks for going through the five steps and setting up a saltwater tank. But if you want to go and set up a reef tank, you can just add corals. That's what I'm going to do with this tank. So the only difference, honestly, do everything the same is just you just need great lighting. If you do that with the corals and stuff, invest in some good lighting. And basically, that's all the steps. If you follow those five steps and you set up your tank, it should look something similar to this, something beautiful. Um, obviously, everyone's tank is going to look different, you know, because that's, you know, people have different size tanks and budgets. But this is why we get into the hobby. It's just, it's so beautiful. Um, even though I have no fish or corals or invertebrates, I have rock, water, and sand, and just with a beautiful light setup, everything's looking great. I can't wait to add fish. But you know, you got to cycle. So be careful with that. And guys, if you followed that, thank you. I hope you learned a lot and just keep reefing, subscribe, comment, like this video and all the description, uh, all the, all the equipment is in the description if you're interested in checking that out. But that's pretty much it guys. Peace.